first Money Heist's final season is not pulling any punches, with Volume 1's intense action and shocking twists leaving fans with these burning questions. The last season of Money Heist, or La Casa de Papel, is not pulling any punches, with its first volume leaving fans stunned and asking for more. It had the most exhilarating episodes with a ton of close calls for the gang, who seemed to be running out of time in the Bank of Spain. And now she's a murderer as well. With the death of a main character and serious complications to the professor's grand plan, fans of the show have been left with some burning questions that Volume 2 will hopefully address. While viewers eagerly wait for the last five episodes set to release on December 3rd, it's a good time to look back at the exciting events of Volume 1 and think about some unanswered questions. Will Arturo survive his gunshot wounds? Arturo Roman may be one of the most hated characters in the show, but he's undoubtedly one of the bravest hostages on Money Heist. His braveness is unfortunately often accompanied by recklessness and arrogance, which is evident in his actions in Volume 1. After stealing weapons and accidentally shooting a few people, Arturo leads a small group of hostages to the armory. Here, he ignores Mario Ubineja's advice and decides to antagonize the gang, which leads to him getting shot by Stockholm. The protagonists immediately resuscitate him and send him outside to get treatment, this is the last time fans see the character. He may return for the final episodes, if only for Denver, to complete his redemption arc and take revenge for both Stockholm and Moscow. Is Inspector Sierra joining or betraying the gang? Inspector Alicia Sierra's story arc took a shocking turn in season 5. After she locates Sergio's hideout, Alicia finds herself in the strange position of having to give birth with the professor and two of his accomplices tied to their chairs. What? She makes the right decision by letting Sergio go, as he doesn't hesitate to help her deliver her baby girl, Victoria. Alicia is known to be brutal and unforgiving, but this season proved that she's also human. Faced with Colonel Tomeo's lies ruining her reputation, and the fate of her child, she might just join forces with the professor in volume 2. However, there was that scene in the restroom where she hid nail clippers in her clothes. She could be plotting against the gang as well, using her time in the hideout to figure out their plan and find a way to steal the incriminating recording to bring down to Mayo. I'm accessing the system. Is Berlin's son going to play a significant role? One of the ways Money Heist was ruined for some fans was when it started to overuse flashbacks, specifically when telling Berlin's story. This continued in season 5, this time showing Berlin's complicated relationship with his secret son, Raphael. Berlin seems to have passed on his love for heists to his otherwise normal son, who was satisfied with studying cybersecurity and searching for day jobs. Unlike previous flashbacks that only served to highlight Berlin's backstory, the flashbacks in the first volume may be hinting at Raphael's appearance in the final episodes. Now that the walls are closing in on the gang, they might need outside help. Raphael and Berlin's ex-wife, Tatyana, could step in and help save the day. It's also possible that the two were part of the heist from the start, with the professor secretly collaborating with them to create the foolproof plan. You really want something in life. You have to steal it from somebody else. How will Stockholm deal with her trauma? Stockholm is undeniably one of the bravest characters in Money Heist. Despite not having the stomach for violence like the other hardened criminals in the crew, she left her average job to join the heist and live as an outlaw. Her background is emphasized by her reaction to shooting Arturo, as she's obviously horrified by what she's done. In the last and most intense episode in the first volume, Stockholm starts to see visions of Arturo everywhere. It happens once as she's treating Helsinki, who notices and says that he recognizes that she has killed someone for the first time. Stockholm becomes too overwhelmed by her visions and injects morphine into her system. This renders her useless and unable to help Denver and Manila as they desperately try to save Tokyo. It'll be interesting to see her navigate these symptoms as well as how the gang will react to her drug use and her visions in the next volume.